Hi, welcome to today's video. I'm All Girling, I'm a sports performance nutritionist, and today I'm talking about creatine and its effect on cycling performance. Ooh. I'm gonna review two studies and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts about creatine and its overall effect on performance. If you don't know what creatine is, it's a supplement called creatine monohydrate, which is the most effective form. Everything else is rubbish. Don't buy it. It's not worth it. Okay, so creatine monohydrate, it's very cheap, very inexpensive. It's one of the most thoroughly researched sports supplements out there. It improves your ability to perform high intensity efforts between the one and 10 second period. It also increases your ability to recover between that and your power output. Also does a bunch of other things like increase lean muscle mass. And it does this by increasing the amount of creatine phosphate within the muscle. It's a lot more effective for vegans than it is for high meat eating individuals because creatine naturally comes from meat. The change of creatine levels between your meat eating ones to adding the supplement may be small, but if you're vegan, it could be down here and then there's a big difference and you'll get more out of it. The first paper is by Tomic et al in 2017. He got people to do a 120 kilometer cycling time trial. Every 10 kilometers, they, I, they did a one kilometer effort all out or a four kilometer effort all out. And they alternated between them every 10K for 120K. They did the trial as a crossover. So you got a real idea about its effect with creatine and loading for a race. Ultimately, overall and very quickly, the Creatine loaded trial outperformed the placebo loaded trial and same for the moderate creatine trial against the moderate placebo trial. It's a really good paper. I like that it was a crossover and also all the individuals, despite being male, were of high endurance trained. They were 63 millimeter uh, VO2 max on average. They saw an increase in performance from creatine even despite the slight weight gain they got, but the weight gain was no different between creatine and carbohydrate to placebo and carbohydrate. So the loading obviously made the bigger difference. The other study we're looking at are Hickner et al. And he did a cycling time trial that was two hours long and every 15 minutes they performed three high intensity efforts at, or sprints at 110% of VO2 max. He saw no change in performance between the two trials. All he did was literally have creatine and not creatine. The baseline was at the beginning that he did the study, then they had to do creatine for 28 days and did the test again. There was a control group, it was nine people in each one. There was no difference seen. Straight away we have two studies that say, one that says yes, one that says no. What do I think? I think that Creatine improves the performance of high intensity efforts. That is proven within other papers, looking at repeated sprint performance on stationary bikes. If you're doing a block of training that incorporates a lot of high intensity sprints, take creatine. It's gonna maximize your performance in those sessions. If you're doing winter training in the gym to gain some lean muscle mass and to work on stability factors and things like this. Take creatine, it'll improve your lean muscle gain. If you are a crit racer, then take creatine. Crit races do not have a lot of hills. They're very punchy, they're very fast, and they are not what's per kilo orientated. They are total power orientated and they're of a shorter intensity. So take creatine. If you're doing 10 mile TTs, I would take creatine. If you're doing predominantly flattish short courses, I would take creatine. One of these studies was a long endurance based activity that took into account watts per kilo and took into account one kilometer and four kilometer all out efforts within 120 kilometer trial. It saw a performance improvement. What do I think about the fact that there's two studies that we just reviewed? One says yes, one says no. I think take it for you as the rider you are. If you are a powerful rider and the kind of rider you are needs to be more explosive, then take creatine. The effects seem to outweigh the, the weight gain you get. And remember the weight gain is relative to your mass. If you are 
a 65 kilo male or female and you take creatine, the potential weight or water gain that you get from it is gonna be minor. If you're a 90 kilo male or female and you take creatine, the amount of muscle mass you have is gonna be greater and you're probably gonna gain more water mass. But think about the kind of rider you are and what kind of races you're doing. I think it's silly just to discount creatine flat out because weight gain and it being a weight obsessed sport. So I'm a fan of creatine. And I think it is worthwhile taking if it's right for you and what you're doing. Another factor to consider as well is dieting. If you are trying to lose body fat, creatine is it incredibly important to help with recovery. We see a decrease in creatine stores if you are dieting and not taking it. If anything, we see a bigger improvement from the effects of creatine in a dieting period. And there are case studies that show lean muscle mass gains or increased lean muscle mass gains despite being in a calorie deficit. I say creatine for the cost, depending on what you're doing and when you're doing it, creatine is ideal. If you really enjoyed today's video, drop a comment down below. Let me know if you've done creatine and what you found happened with yourself. Did you gain loads of weight? Did you feel the effects of it? Did you get benefit? I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.